got the old gatekeeper here. This morning on this treadmill like a mouse on a wheel out here cruising on the medium side. Anyway, just wanted to uh, just show you firsthand, just like if I was a regular customer, how you could take advantage of this end of September HGN Park sale. All right, so we're gonna go over here to YouTube. Find gatekeeper. Oh, there it was right there. Look at that ugly son of a gun. I'm making a video. I brought my son up here with me for the first time. He's just talking to me. Look at that ugly cat and picker right there. I need to find me a better thumbnail. Let's go check this out. I already know what the video says. I'm just gonna go get the link. You can do this link right here, which is the short link. Well, I've got the other link right there. They're all the same link. One's just short, one's long. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that bad boy. We'll bring up Google Forms. End of September HG transistor and part sale. Cool. Now, I did find out you do not have to be signed into a Google account to do this, okay? Which is cool. Which is good. That's good. You don't have to be. So, basically, what are you needing to purchase? Uh, I'll get some pills and parts. Valid phone number. Well, I don't know my phone number. Oh, that's the address. <laughs> you fill out your phone number right there. Close a list of all the parts available. Type the quantity for each part you wish to purchase. If you don't wish to purchase a part, type zero or leave it blank. Well, leaving it blank's easier. Twenty-eight seventy-nine is twenty-five dollars a piece. These things cost thirty-two ninety-nine retail. What the heck? Shit! I'm gonna about twenty of them guys. <laughs> Give me a couple of seeds today. I don't need no other transistors, man. Uh, I got some 2312, 1969s. Below this point are all non-transistor parts I have for sale at the moment. If you're not interested, you can just leave blank and skip to the bottom of the page. Well, let's see what he's got. Ooh, these cats right here are nice. Nice. Perfect capacitor. Perfect capacitor to put it in the output of a four pill section. I'm telling you, these bad boys will not fail on you. This is a new old stock part right here that's been in existence for years. And uh, 4K, uh, 4 kilovolt N1500. Nice parts. Wow. I'm at least give me a bite. Well, with them bad boys. This right here is pretty much about the same part. The, 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 the transistor itself isn't as fat, <laughs> you know, isn't as thick physically in size, but it's still technically about the same part. It's just the leads are not long. So, uh, so you'd have to accommodate for that. I personally have used one of these on the output of a two pill I was able to bend the leads up to the smaller relay uh, the 5 amp relay I believe it was and uh, I know my buddy Barracuda has used this part a couple of times so but you just got short lead leak so that's the only reason it, it costs less that's the only reason I'm charging less too because having shorter lead lengths like that 
may hinder people in their designs. It won't hinder me. I'm, you know, me using all metal clads and stuff, I'm used to putting down copper, copper slabs and stuff, man, to accommodate parts. Got the metals. Nice. Now I know one thing we all have to have with our builds. So I went ahead and bought the biggest bulking parts that I've ever bought. And like I said, you can ignore that 10%. That 10% lets you know these capacitors are going to be a 10% value from 120 left and right, plus and negative. But that means nothing when you're buying these from me because now I haven't went through all 10,000 and, uh, and, and matched all of them, but I've matched hundreds of them, hundreds of them already. And I'm going to continue matching them. And basically, I'm only keeping all of them that falls within a 1%, or I meaning I'm separating all the ones that falls within 1% or so, and then putting the ones that doesn't to the side for my personal use, because that would be actually great for tuning reasons, because I'll be able to probably go all the way down to around 100 and, I think 108 picofarad or something like that. I've, I've got some 10 percenters before just for that reason because I'll be able to use them for fine tuning. I'll be able to have like all the way down to 105, 108 picofarads all the way up to 100 and, I can't remember what it is, but perfect for tuning. And I actually had a part bin just for these. It had, um, what it had like 20 drawers in it and every drawer was four of these. <laughs> you know, it's not like 105 picofarads, 106 picofarads, et cetera. Cause I'm a fine tuner, you know. Maybe I need to, re uh, Rename my business uh, Fine Tune. Oh, wait. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to get myself in trouble. Um, I wonder who caught that. Let's see. Yeah, these are kind of a test. I, I found these right here for a decent. But the only negative thing about them, as you can see, they're short lead lengths. They're designed for through hole. That's why they're bent like that. Designs for dropping in through a hole. So I don't know if anybody's going to be interested in these or not. But uh, the lead lengths are, are long enough. You can definitely use them for the five amp relay on the output. But yeah, not not a bigger relay. Now let me stop for a second and talk about these bad boys right here. Ooh, huh? We've all seen DM30 silver dip micas because they're the big boys, man. The higher the DM number goes, has it can have to do with voltage, but it technically has to do with amperage. Uh, you tell me how much a part can hold in volts, but I don't know how much amperage can that bad boy hold. How much heat? in that bad boy hole. DM30s are supposed to be able to hold more heat because they can hold a little bit more amperage in a DM19 or DM15. I don't know why, but it seems like many years there back in the past, I'm sure some other builders can concur with me with this, we had a lot of DM30s that were felling and it made no sense to me because they were just on the output of four pill sections and there's absolutely no reason at all under the sun that a DM30 should be falling. Now, when you got reflect, you gotta understand, when you got reflect, not only the voltage that's coming out from the transistors, the RF voltage, but the RF voltage is coming back, adds with that and the voltage becomes a little higher, but still, the, I don't see any reason why it should be as it, anywhere near high enough to blow a DM30, especially a DM30 thousand volt. I don't know if those are ones that, I can't remember if those ones that were felling were, were uh, thousand volters or not. This was many years ago, but at, since then it seems like you know they're back to normal. I don't know if it was a bad batch or what was going on back then. But, but this right here is something that I've never seen. I have never seen a thousand pig pair DM30 in my life. And I've looked for silver dip micas from the ends of the earth. 
<laughs> and uh, I've seen some DM42s. Now, that's the biggest silver dip mica I've ever seen. I think that's the biggest package made. And at this point in time, the only time you're going to see them is usually if they're customly made for somebody. Because you can contact Cornell Dubler right now and get transistors, uh, get capacitors customly made for you. But you're going to have to buy a bulk, big bulk. And uh, I ran across these right here. I had never in my life seen a DM30 1500 volt part, first off. When I seen it was a 1500 volt part, that caught my eyes quick. But then I seen how much the guy was trying to charge for them. I'm like, God, took money. That's, I mean, it just cancels out the fun. I'm like, I can't pay that. So I hit the guy up. And I said, look, I see you only got 25 or 30 of these left. If I bought all of them from you, could I get them at this price? And we went back and forth two or three times, but he finally agreed to it. It's still expensive as heck, but it's just the rarity of it. Now, gatekeeper, what would I use this for? Simple, man. Throw it up on top of an output transformer. Is there a need for it for a regular amp? Of course not. The metal 1000 is suffices above all, but what about that extra competition box that you want to beat the goddamn snot out of? This is your part. <laughs> Wanna make yourself feel better? Get one of these right here, man. Somebody look at that box and be like, what the heck is that? Yeah, that's a bragging point, man. That may be the one of the last uh, thousand peak affair DM 30, 1500 volt parts. <laughs> so I had to buy them. It may have been a waste of money. Nobody may buy these, and if nobody buys them, I'll use them. I'll put them in some comp comp two pill four pills or something man all right just had to stop on that one for a second so we got some nice filter capacitors for hot buses if you're into that these 104s are going to become my default now because let's face it it's hard to jump on ebay and find some good 104s now ebay does have some 1kv 104s that are real good. That's about the only 104s I can find on eBay that are worth a hoot, shall I say. It, you just do not have a variety of 104s to pick from out there in the normal part world like you do 103s. And it's good to have 104s for the hot bus. I'm going to make a video in the future to talk more about this, but we're talking about frequency ranges of filter filtration of noises and dirty voltage etc gotta have some 104s on your hot bus it's best to so uh i went looking real hard real hard found me a good uh, parts supplier There's some new old stock 104s that are these are as high quality as high quality gets right here good part man good part 50 volt I mean, there's no reason there's no need to put a hundred 1k 104 on a hot bus we do it because that's like the only parts we can get uh, that seem strong enough from, from certain places, but these bad boys right here are good 104s, very good 104s. It's going to be one of my defaults when I'm not using a, building a candy painted box or something, I mean the quarter, quarter, color coordinate everything. And uh, these are really good 104s as well, high quality 104s. I kind of, what I did is from this part company, I bought 10 different 104s. I, I, it blew my mind too that I could get that many different 104s from this company. But I bought 10 different 104s within the price range of, you know, affordability. And I basically picked three out of those 10 that I would start supplying just for myself personally. And these are the two that my, of my favorite right here. My third favorite is a 1KV. 104. These are my new uh, 1000s I'm going to be using for my delay. Really good cap. High quality. Affordable. That's what I'm looking for is high quality and affordable. Alright. What kind of uh, yeah. we'll go ahead and pick this small priority. Get there a day quicker. And then right here you can just read about uh, 
Please read before you click the submit button. If you have specific parts you'd like me to stock up on, please list them below. Your input will greatly assist me. That's true, man. If, if, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not going to put it like this. I am not going to become a part selling business. That's not, that's not, God, that would be a, that would, that would consume a lot of my time and I'd have to hire somebody. That is not my plan whatsoever. I just want to supply some of the main parts that we use and do my best to make it affordable because I have no overhead. It's not going to hurt me to take in a little bit less. And basically all of this isn't the primary focus, the transistors of the primary focus. But while you're purchasing transistors, you can purchase a couple of the parts if you need them. It's, I'm not trying to compete with no other part supplier out there whatsoever. God, no. I, I, uh, I, I've got... I've got other avenues that I'm that I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to focus on the amplifier aspect, but I am possibly going to start supplying some kits soon. But I'm putting that to the side right now. I got to get my other program finished up. I kind of left it almost done. <laughs> I'm good at doing that. I don't know why. I've always had that that, that negative attribute or property about me of starting something. Not finishing it, but I love starting multiple projects and never finishing nothing. Uh, that's been my New Year's resolution in the last two or three years. One of these years, I'm going to somehow accomplish it. But anyway, uh, if you have any parts that you would really like to purchase for me to have on hand, tell me. So far, I've only had one person say output transformers. That is 100%, 100% coming. I'm actually uh, going to stop piling uh, parts for that. That's definitely coming. Definitely coming. And that's about it, man. Basically, the default payments, just, you know, I send you an invoice to your text message, a link to your invoice or your PayPal. I mean, your email, excuse me. And you can PayPal with your PayPal, their balance in your PayPal, or debit credit, or Venmo, since PayPal owns Venmo. Or you can, uh, you don't have to have PayPal whatsoever. You can be completely a non PayPal customer and PayPal, pay for it with debit or credit with the invoice. That's why I love PayPal. If you like to have an alternate, alternate, now if that's what you're going to do, you don't even need to put anything down here whatsoever. But if you need an alternative form of payment, a like Cash App, a Zelle, or I've only had one customer pay with crypto, <laughs> but you know, if you're, if you're into crypto and you're going to pay with crypto, you get 3% off uh, the total cost. And I'm actually going to be upping that discount here soon, but I'm going to wait until I start making some videos showing you all how easy it is to get into cryptocurrency. It is something that a lot of you old timers may want to look at because just imagine, just imagine, just sit back. Calm down, zero miles per hour, and think. What if you would have got in and made an investment somewhere, anywhere, anywhere in the huge sector of the worldwide web, of the internet, of the boom that happened back then? If you just invested a hundred bucks into Microsoft when it was built, just a hundred bucks into American Online when it was hit on the stock market. If you put a hundred bucks in IBM when it started, just imagine where you'd be right now. That's all I gotta say, because this stuff's here to stay. And if you, if you don't if you don't believe me, just look. PayPal has came out with its own cryptocurrency. Yes sir, it's called PYUSD. PayPal stable for you. Why do you think another reason why Facebook's rebranding, Twitter is rebranding? Twitter has already drew up his, drew up, uh, they've already drew up their whole thing for their cryptocurrency they'll be using for payments inside the system. And in the near future, every big system like that's going to have its own digital asset. And they're all going to be connected to the dollar until, well, I ain't going to get into all that, but at the time, they're all going to be connected to the dollar. But I'm gonna make some lesson stuff on this in the future, just for the people that are interested. 
and I'm going to make some perks to it to give you an incentive to want to look into it because this is cool this is so cool and I'll share some of my personal experiences why I'm so bullish on it so optimistic on it and uh, yeah so let me go ahead and get off here I ain't breathing this hard because I got this thing turned down today Gonna take advantage of the end of the September sale. Uh, once you fill out the form, just be patient on me. I'm not sitting here sending out invoices every second like I was doing with with uh, some text messages to come in. But pretty much, I'm checking it out like every hour, every couple hours, whatever, and then get the invoices sent out. So, all right, y'all have a great day. Do something nice for somebody this weekend. God bless. Gatekeeper, Northeast End, a big GA. We're good and gone. Bye. <laughs>